Welcome to Hollywood, Florida, just north of downtown Miami and the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. We're inside the Hard Rock Live Arena for Friday Night Fights. A great crowd is on hand to watch two Miami fighters in our main event. And Friday Night Fights tonight is presented in high definition on ESPN2 HD. We'll crown two champions tonight at the Hard Rock. First, a light heavyweight title is up for grabs between former champion Clinton Woods and the number one challenger, Tavares Cloud. And then Juan Urango will meet the number one contender for his junior welterweight belt in Randall, the knockout king, Bailey. Hi, everyone. I'm Bob Wachusen. So glad you could spend part of your weekend with us in for Joe Tessator tonight. And what a way to close out this season of Friday Night Fights. Not one, but two championship bouts on the card tonight. We were at the weigh-ins yesterday, and the fireworks already began. It was a spirited crowd as the fighters stepped to the scale. And first up was a pro's pro in Clinton Woods, followed by... Also tonight, 14-year veteran Clinton Woods once held the very light heavyweight belt that he will fight for again against an up-and-coming star in the number one contender, Tavares Cloud. 19-0 with 18 knockouts, and the younger Cloud is brimming with confidence. I think my speed, strength, youth, everything is going to overwhelm me. A championship night now on Friday Night Fights. Alexander. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We welcome you to the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino Hollywood for ESPN Friday Night Fights. It's time now for the vacant IBF Light Heavyweight Championship of the World. Please welcome to the ring at this time, the former Light Heavyweight Champion of the World, Clinton Wood. way to the ring the 14 year pro Clinton Woods a record of 42 4 and 1 25 knockouts and Teddy he has fought some of the best in the game well that's where his big advantage is he's going to need that experience in other words he has swam in the deep waters before Cloud has not been in those deep waters nearly as much as Woods Woods needs to survive early the youth and the power of Cloud will be there and then, of course, later on, Woods is hoping his experience will shine through. Let's take a closer look at Clinton Woods. Again, 25 knockouts in his career, part of 42 wins. Experience, as Teddy said, against the some of the top competition. This is the third time that he has fought in the United States. Both of his previous fights in the U.S. were losses, but against great fighters. We'll talk more about that. Back in 2005, one of the hallmark wins in his career, beat Rico Hoy for his first world title. He then defended the title before losing in what he said was maybe his poorest performance ever against Antonio Tarver in 2008. And back inside the ring now to Bob Alexander. Now on his way to the ring, please welcome the undefeated Tavares Cloud. Tavares Cloud earns this fight tonight, winning a title eliminator in his last fight over former title holder Julio Gonzalez. A 10th round TKO, but a fight that he dominated. It could have been stopped a lot earlier. That was the first pro fight that Cloud ever had that went beyond five rounds, and that was a year ago almost exactly. He hasn't fought in about 12 and a half months. Yeah, he's been inactive, as you said, about a year, and that's a tough way, Bob, to go into the toughest fight, at least on paper, the toughest fight of your career. And as you said, other than his last fight for Cloud, he has built his record on some soft opposition. So, of course, the question is, how real is the power suggested in the 19-0, 18 knockout record of Cloud? We're about to find out. Oh A closer look now at Tavares Cloud. Again, 19-0, 18 wins by knockout. He was the 2000 under-19 national champion at 178 pounds. He's faced limited opposition, but looked great in his last fight when he stepped up in class against Julio Gonzalez. 
his last fight certainly his best win that put him in this position and let's take a look now at our just for men hair color stay in the fight with him well let's see if we can give a little roadmap to our fans out there of what they might expect for cloud he is 37 years old mr woods is go to his body wear him down and set up the right hand and for woods well use your experience pick spots on the outside and control that pace the way you like it back inside the ring to bob alexander Ladies and gentlemen, from the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino, Hollywood, our first bout of the evening is brought to you by Seminole Warriors Boxing Promotions and Richie Boy Promotions in association with Dennis Hobson Fight Academy. Sponsored by the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino, Hollywood, and the Seminole Tribe of Florida. This is your co-main event of the evening, scheduled for 12 rounds of boxing for the vacant IBF Light Heavyweight Championship of the the world sanctioned by the international boxing federation marion mohammed president supervisor at ringside william james the three judges scoring this bout at ringside are mike ross hubert earl and nelson vasquez when the bell rings the man in charge working his 27th world championship bout your referee telles asamino introducing first Fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the blue trunks. He weighed in at 173 and a half pounds. His professional record, 42 wins, four losses, one draw, with 25 wins by way of knockout. He hails from Sheffield, England, ranked number two in the world by the IBF. Here is the former light heavyweight champion of the world, Clinton Wood. His opponent fighting out of the red corner, wearing the tiger skin trunks. He weighed on at 174 pounds. He is undefeated in his professional career. 19 wins, no losses, 18 wins by way of knockout. From the capital of the Sunshine State, Tallahassee, Florida, ranked number one in the world by the IBF, introducing Tavares Pulau. What a great atmosphere for Teddy, as you said, experience against youth. Yeah, well, as far as Woods is concerned, he hopes that old saying, youth is wasted on the young, applies tonight. Take hands, good luck, and God bless. You know, one thing, Bob, right from the beginning, Woods is going to have to show a change. I know that, you know, old dogs don't learn new tricks, but... He has to show that he can travel better because most of his fights have been in England. He has only fought two times in the U.S. and he is 0-2 across the pond. This is what you're going to get. You're going to get Cloud come out and see just how old Woods is. But can he keep up this pace if he doesn't nail Woods? And does he give Woods a chance to nail him in between a shot? Cloud very much the Tiger right from the outset. As his attitude seems to match his trunks. Cloud 10 years younger. This is the best fighter in the stiffest test that Cloud has faced. Common opponent for these two fighters is Julio Gonzalez. It shows the power difference. Woods won a 12-round decision twice, while Cloud knocked out Gonzalez in the 10th. A good sharp right hand lights up Woods by Cloud. No problem losing the first part, the early parts of the fight for a veteran like Woods, Bob. No problem. He doesn't expect to win early on with the more energetic, the younger Cloud. He expects to survive early, be able to avoid the big shots, and then, as we said earlier, take Cloud into deep waters and find out how he behaves. Is he a pro fighter? 
Is he a front runner? Can he handle a test? Cloud has not been tested yet. He may be tonight. Look for Cloud. There's one move, his signature move. He likes to rotate his right shoulder back. Make you miss something. Rotate that right shoulder back and then counter with his right hand. He has not used that move, but that is a trademark move for Mr. Cloud. To take your jab here, just bring that shoulder back, make it come short, and shoot that right hand. If you're fighting a guy 37 years old, which Woods is, and you're, you're a young guy like Cloud, you want to go to that body. See if you can wear those 37-year-old legs out a little bit. And Cloud is trying to do that. Out of the last 20 seconds of round number one. Cloud has been much busier here in the opening round. Now Woods tries to make a statement in the closing second. Round number one of 12 on Friday Night Fights. ESPN Friday Night Fights presented by Just For Men Hair Color knocks out the gray better than ever. And in part by Verizon Wireless, America's largest mobile to mobile calling family. Set for round number two. Of this fight scheduled to go 12 between Clinton Woods and Tavares Cloud. Light heavyweight championship on the line between these two fighters on Friday Night Fights. The first of two title fights that we have for you on this season ending edition tonight. Let's take a look at our punch statistics from round number one. And again, Cloud was much busier than Woods. It's not just how many punches are thrown, but as always, where are the punches thrown? And again, for Cloud, he wants to go to the body of the older Woods. See if he can wear him down. Chip away at that wall. Woods has only lost to top fighters in his career. Three of his four losses to world champions. So that's what Woods wants to do. He wants to block. He wants to make Cloud miss, frustrate him a little bit, wear him down a little bit, make him start to think a little bit. For the first time in his career, I'm not having my way. Can I handle it? He wants questions going into the mind of Cloud. And Woods hopes he doesn't have the answer. We talk about Cloud coming into the biggest fight part of his career, one year inactive. Woods has not been that active. Six and a half months since his last fight. Then he only had one fight in 2008 and one in 2007. And before that, he was off one year. We asked Tavares Cloud why the one-year layoff, and now he takes a shot from Clinton Woods. And Woods, the aggressor, as Cloud backs up against the ropes, and he told us this was Tavares Cloud. My understanding is that if you're the number one contender, you don't take chances. You wait until you get a shot at a championship. So yes, it was frustrating. I was used to fighting every three or four months. But it's been a nearly 13-month layoff before tonight's title fight. You don't take chances, but you should still stay active. You can hurt yourself by sitting back and just waiting for that spot. Especially if you're used to being active. And maybe that inactivity early on, at least, while there's still rust, and the rust has not diminished yet, Cloud is suffering from that one-year layoff. Clinton Woods from Sheffield, England, again, 37 years old, a 14-year pro, picking his spots here in the second round and scoring. So you just said it, Bob, that's a good point. Picking a spot, that experience of Woods, he knows when to throw, Cloud just throws, but Woods makes sure they count, like that one. It might be one round apiece. Hard to imagine there's a heart beating faster tonight, Hard Rock Live than Emma Smith, Tavares Cloud's mother, but 
Tavares Crowd grew up in Tallahassee, one of five children. His mother works at a department store in Tallahassee. His father was not around. So basically, he told us Emma Smith means everything to me, my brothers and sisters, and it means a lot to have her here tonight to her son, Tavares Cloud. <laughs> Cloud has been involved in some head clashes with his style in his career. We'll see whether or not that becomes an intangible in this fight. Disparity first round to second round in terms of the punches landed. Again, Woods likes to make his punches count. When you're young, little rambunctious, little wet behind the ears still like Cloud is. You know, Bob, sometimes you just waste things a little bit. You go out there and you just let them go. Mr. Woods, after 14 years and nine months of a career, he doesn't waste much. He's like your grandmother, or maybe your mother was at the dinner table. You know, you don't get away from that table and leave anything on the plate. You don't want to waste a darn thing. And Woods puts that to the practice. When you look at me, do I strike you as someone that left a lot on his plate? No. Up? No, I no so. your mom, your grandma, everybody was very happy. Clean plate. Good sharp uppercut that time from Clinton Woods. Caught Tavares Cloud coming in. Watch that move of Cloud. He's looking for it. He's going to rotate that right shoulder back, Bob. He's going to try to make something coming at him fall short and then come right back with that right hand. A good sharp right hand at the end of the combination by Tavares Cloud. And then a little bit of showmanship by Woods, but Woods said, hey, look, see, he's putting his hands on that. That's not because he's showing off. That's not because he's got that kind of bravado and he's that kind of fancy Dan. That's a mind game. That's an experienced guy trying to get into the head of a less experienced guy and say, your punches that normally affect somebody, they're not affecting this guy. But right now, Cloud's not buying it. He's behaving the way you want a guy who can punch behave. He just keeps throwing him. Several strong head shots by Tavares Cloud as we're inside of the final 10 seconds of round number three. Off to a great start on Friday Night Fights. Actually, from the last round, watch the right uppercut of Woods. He probably wishes that left hook was right behind it a little faster. But then Cloud says, okay, you hit me with one, I'll come back with four or five. I'm the younger guy. That's the way I'm supposed to do it. Tavares Cloud may have won round number three, throwing 110 total punches in that round. But a very even fight so far. Now, Tavares Cloud is used to knocking out his opponents. As we said, 19-0 with 18 knockouts. Clinton Woods, though, in 47 professional fights, has been knocked out once, and it was Roy Jones that knocked him out. So Tavares Cloud is trying to do something that no one does to Clinton Woods. Teddy, as we take a look at your scorecard. And right now, nice and close, what you would expect going into this fight. The younger man early on carrying it a little bit, but the experienced fighter staying close and maybe looking for a little crack in the armor of the youngin. Again, the question, one question in this fight that hovers overhead like a cloud, excuse the pun, but it really does. And Bob, that question is what happens if and when Cloud is tested? And that's the answer Woods is looking for. He's just trying to find the right way to test him. Is it to back him up? He tried it a little bit, Woods. He changed his mind now. Or is it to box a little bit? Drag him out. Pull him into deep waters. Woods is capable of trying both ploys. Both tactics. Little inside, little outside. 
You better be careful, Woods, there when he steps outside. He does it with his hands up. Otherwise, he'll get caught a left hook. Good straight jabs from Tavares Cloud. Thirty seconds to go in round number four. The one thing that you maybe can admonish Woods a little bit, not using the jab enough when there's separation. And that happens. Cloud, the younger, stronger guy, walks right in the front door. Experienced guy Woods, better get that jab working a little bit. Still some moments on the outside. Good body shots from Cloud, followed by a headshot from Woods, and then Cloud comes right back. Four rounds in the books. And Tavares Cloud's biggest fan is with Bernardo. That's right, we're talking about Emma Smith, Tavares' mother. Nothing's been easy for Tavares growing up. It's not an easy fight either tonight. <laughs> we came here to win, and we will. Talk to us about how he came up, how he became so hungry to become a world champion. Tavares, he, he was a good kid. He yearned to fight. I went to him when he was approximately six years old and I asked him what he wanted to be when he grew up. And of course he said a boxer. To me, basically, he was a gift to me. He's living out his reality. This was his dream. Now it's a reality. He'll bring that belt to Tallahassee tonight. I know he will. There you go. Thank you very much, Emma. We hope to see him come away with the championship box. It's not going to be easy. Well, Bernardo, it's nice for Tavares Cloud to have his mom in attendance. Clinton Woods' mom, though, played a very large role in his life as well. Woods grew up in Sheffield, England, one of seven children. But he was a school dropout at the age of 16, and he said drinking was actually his favorite pastime, along with drinking went fighting. And his life was really aimless until one day he found a note under his apartment door from his mother that said, you are basically putting me through misery and you need to look at yourself in the mirror. And Clinton Woods, as a result, went back to the gym after a brief amateur career, became a pro fighter, and credits the letter that his mom wrote to him and slipped under his door as a moment-changing experience in his life. Woods is another fighter also that's a great example of this sport, saving them and getting them on the straight and narrow. Woods, a kid who had a lot of problems growing up, used to get in trouble. He says it himself. I used to fight all the time outside in bars. And boxing, again, has served to put him in the right direction. He's a youthful person, a youthful person, a successful person, someone to be proud of, just like Cloud. A lot more miles on the odometer of Woods than Clouds, and that's what Cloud is hoping for. He's hoping that some of the tread on the tires, so to speak, of Woods is a little thin. So both guys are looking for the advantages and they think they have it. Woods with experience to test Cloud, bring him into deep waters, see if he falters, see if some questions get in his head that can't be answered. And Cloud again figures, hey, this guy's been around so long, he's a little worn out. I'm gonna do some of this on him. I'm going to push him downhill a little bit. You wonder, though, if you're Tavares Cloud with some of the shots he's delivered to Woods, and now the mouthpiece comes popping out of the mouth of Tavares Cloud. But you wonder if some of the shots that he's delivering to Clinton Woods so far tonight are shots that, when he was up against lesser opponents, staggered them much more so than the veteran he's facing tonight. Well, I can tell you the answer, Bob. Yes. The answer is yes, they have. And, of course, it's speak in the record of Cloud, 19-0 with 18 knockouts. Yeah, when he's hit other guys, they've gone away. But we knew going in, and Cloud and his people should have known going in, that wasn't going to be such the case tonight with Woods, the more experienced fighter. And, again, the highest caliber fighter that Cloud has ever been in with. See, this is where I think Woods hurts himself and gets behind the eight ball a little bit. But he's outside in his separation. 
and then not a lot going on. This is where Woods needs to use that jab. You know, steal these moments. There he goes, grab these moments. And that's what he starts doing now. You know, test the young guy a little bit on the outside. Five rounds down in this light heavyweight championship fight on Friday Night Fights. Watch this move I'm talking about here. Mr. Cloud will rotate his shoulder and come back with the right hand. There it is. But he misses. That's the experience, Bob, of Woods moving your head at the right time. I'm Bob Wachusen in for Joe Tessator tonight alongside Teddy Atlas at the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Hollywood, Florida, just north of Miami. One Florida product in the ring right now in Tavares Cloud from Tallahassee against the Englishman Clinton Woods. A light heavyweight championship at stake between these two fighters and still to come, a junior welterweight championship as Juan Urango will put his belt on the line against Randall to knock out King Bailey. So that's where Woods has to be careful. He got hit in the body, covering up inside, and that drove him out. And he's got to be careful when he goes out. Woods, that is. He doesn't go straight out with his hands down because Cloud will follow you with a left hook. Cloud is looking for that right hand. Watch him rotate that right shoulder back. And he'll look for that right hand. Let's take a look at Teddy's scorecard. Last three rounds going to the younger man. But this is right about the time where Woods is hoping to see a little slippage from Cloud. See him slow down a little bit. See him think about things he hasn't had to think about in his previous 19 fights. Again, one place Woods doesn't want to be. He can go inside and outside. He's been in with the best of them. But for the most part, he wants to be on the outside, using his height, his reach. He doesn't want to be inside. That's Cloud's place. I mean, that's his territory. He's got shorter arms. He's strong. He's physical. He needs to be close. And when he's close, he can do his thing. He can work to the body, bring it upstairs, and he can be the boss. To me, separation would be the best friend and the best view for Woods. But when there's separation, Bob, it only lasts for a second if you're not using your jab. If Woods has separation and he doesn't use that jab, it's only going to be a moment before Cloud does that. Comes right inside and says hello. Another good combination from Cloud. And Woods tries to come back. Well, Clinton Woods has a different kind of chin than anyone else that Tavares Cloud has ever fought, including Julio Gonzalez, who Cloud stopped in the 10th round but hurt badly very early in that fight, trying to do the same now to Clinton Woods at the tail end of round number six. Nothing fancy so far. Cloud just outworking the old man. We're halfway home as Cloud scores again. Jump. As we said, Tavares Cloud is a strong opponent, but with all due respect to Tavares Cloud, Teddy Atlas, there's nothing he's going to do tonight, as you can see, that Clinton Woods hasn't seen before when you fought that kind of competition. Been there, done that. That's what Mr. Woods would tell you, and that's what that graphic tells you. As I said early on, Woods has only lost to the best. Three of his four losses to world champions. He's won seven of his last eight fights, has Clinton Woods. His only loss was two fights ago, back in April of 2008, when he lost his belt in a unanimous 12-round decision to Antonio Tarver that he said was the worst fight of his career. He had a terrible relationship with his trainer at the time, an awful camp prior to that fight, and he actually considered retiring after the Tarver fight. He fought so poorly, but then he decided to come back, retrain, and refocus his attitude and get back to basics. And since then, he's been a better fighter. Although he did say that tonight could be a defining moment in his career. If Woods loses to Tavares Cloud, that might be it. Well, the way people outside of boxing look at this fight, they look at a guy like Woods, they say he's 10 years older. But people inside the sport of the sweet science, they say, yeah, he's 10 years older and many punches older. And that is the question right now. The punches Woods has taken during his 14-year and nine-month career. 
has it had a toll? And is he a little shop worn? Cloud is trying to find that out. Takes another big left hook from Tavares Cloud. And Cloud just misses with a big right hook. Doing damage up against the ropes is Cloud on Woods. The mind of Woods says, I shouldn't be on the ropes. I'm too experienced for this with a young, dynamic fighter like Cloud. But the 37 years old legs of Woods says a different question, says a different story. Where am I going to go? Again, that jab of Woods, to me, is really what jumps out that's missing here tonight. And he allows Cloud, again, to get in that kitchen. And what Woods trying to do here, Bob, is trying to pick his spot. He's hoping that maybe Cloud gets a little fat inside, a little wide with a shot, and then maybe Woods can sneak something inside it. Tavares Cloud told us yesterday that he respects the experience that Clinton Woods has, but he believes that his youth, his speed, his aggression, his tenacity will be served tonight against the older, more experienced Woods. That's been the case through seven. We're past the midway point of our first title fight tonight and another title fight to come as Juan the Iron Twin Urango will put his junior welterweight championship up against Randall, the knockout King Bailey in our main event, Friday Night Fights, presented by Just For Men Hail, Hair Color. And that is still to come, but more action now between Clinton Woods and Tavares Cloud, and Cloud seemingly in control of this fight. For Bob, you do football, you do college football too, right? I do. I mean, this has a little bit of the feel going in a, a national title game, number one versus number two. And so far, number one in the IBF, Mr. Cloud, is beating number two in the IBF, Mr. Woods. But the second half's coming. Let's take a look at the average punches that have been landed from the first two rounds, or the first five rounds, pardon me, compared to the last two. And it's lopsided for Tavares Cloud. And again, Second half just started. Let's see if number two can make a few adjustments, not in the locker room, but in the corner and in his own mind. That's the great thing about boxing. You can't go in the locker room for 20 minutes. You got one minute in that corner to make that adjustment. Only one round for Woods, and that was back in the second on Teddy Scorecard. And again, I think Woods keeping it a little too close. Staying on the inside too much. Needs to back it out a little bit. Try to control the outside. The inside is the young man's territory. The outside is where, again, I think Woods should be using that jab. There's one problem. Every time he uses that jab, Bob, watch him. Woods on the outside when he gets some separation. When he jabs, instead of keeping his range, he has the habit of stepping in. And he gets caught with the hook because he's too close. He doesn't need to step in. He needs to get full extension on that jab. Woods not getting full extension on that jab. He's getting three quarters extension. And that's keeping him close enough for that. For the big power punches, and that's Cloud's game. The power punches of Cloud to come back. If I'm in the corner, Woods, I'm telling him, you've been using a three quarter jab. Start using a full jab. A big left hook at the end of that combination by Cloud. And he has Woods hurt right in the middle of the ring. And now the knees wobble. And again, Woods pulls straight back. And that left hook was there. Woods has a bad habit of going straight back in the line of fire. And this is where Cloud needs to go to the body. Free some of that movement a little bit. Down to the last 20 seconds. Can Woods survive round number eight? good right hand from Cloud. But Woods knows what he's doing. He's trying to catch him in between.
Woods will escape this round, but it is a decisive round again for Tavares Black. Action-packed last round. The left hook again. You see Woods went straight back, Bob. Still in that no-man's land, that dangerous territory, and he got caught the left hook. Again, you see Woods go straight back, and that left hook of Cloud stepping forward catches him. And then he knows what to do. He pursues his man. He stays right on him. Backs him up into the corner. And at least on my scorecard, he earns himself a 10-8 round. And Tavares Cloud again comes out aggressively to start here in the night. Well, you know why? His corner said, the guy's 37 years old. He was just hurt. He was batted. And he only had one minute to recover. Let's find out if he was long enough. Oh, you know what? Right he might not have been. Give credit to Cloud. He comes out. The last round, Bob. What does he hurt Woods with? The left hook. He comes out this round, he shows him the right hand. That means, yeah, he's young, yeah, he's strong, but yes, he's thinking too. Again, to me, Woods staying too close. I know he's game, I know he's experienced, I know he's had a dependable chin. He's a former world champion. He probably wanted to test Cloud a little bit, back him up, see if he can handle that kind of fight, see if he can put some questions, some cobwebs into his head. But from a physical standpoint, he needed to be on the outside. Well, Clinton Woods is a pro's pro, though, isn't he? He yes, has he taken is. some tremendous shots, and here he comes right back at Cloud and scored up against the ropes. The best performance in any round so far by Cloud, the last round. Another big left hand. And right now, Cloud is thinking when he throws those combinations. He's placing those combinations. Left hook underneath, right hand up top. Right hand underneath, left hook up top. Those punches have meaning, have purpose. Selecting combinations like that. Left uppercut, right hand. Cloud is learning in this fight. He's not just chucking punches. He's tossing the right ones. Becoming a pitcher, not just a thrower. Watch for that rotation on the inside with Cloud. He'll rotate that right shoulder back and explode that right hand. Good sharp right hand by Clinton Woods. As we come down to the end of the ninth round, set to go for 12 before we crown a light heavyweight champion. An all-world championship fight card. So I figured what better than to get a world champion to do the fight plan. So I got a phone book and I started looking for local world champions. I got to Jay and I got just what I needed. Glenn Johnson, former light heavyweight champ of the world. Thanks, thanks Glenn. Thanks for the phone call, Teddy. Thanks for having your number listed. You're welcome. And stay tuned for a great main event and a terrific fight plan coming later. All that on Friday Night Fights presented by Just For Men Hair Color. After we finish, between Clinton Woods and Tavares Cloud, Randall Bailey and Juan Urango for Urango's IBF Junior Welterweight Belt. Coming up next. It seems clear, Teddy, that Tavares Cloud would love a knockout 
against Clinton Woods. Woods has only been stopped in 47 fights one time, and it was by Roy Jones. Having said that, if you're Cloud, you clearly, even if you lose the last two rounds, are going to win this fight, you would think, on the scorecards. It, it, do you change your strategy at all in the last two rounds to make sure that all of a sudden a home run punch doesn't land from Clinton Woods? You do what you do. Because part of your defense, and that's what you're talking about, don't get careless, don't give up defense when you're way ahead. And Cloud is way ahead, but part of your defense is your offense. So you don't go into, I'm going to use some of your terminology, make you nice and comfortable, buddy. You don't go into that prevent defense, because prevent defense is in your business, it prevents you from winning. There's nothing comfortable about a prevent defense. No, there's not. Because you see the team that was not going down the field, what happens? They march right down the field. You don't want to see all of a sudden Woods marching down the field if you're a back of Cloud. So you want to keep that offense going. Be smart. Keep moving your head. You know, go get sloppy, but be what you need to be. Be consistent with your style and with your identity and with your tools of the trade. That's what. If I'm in the corner with Cloud, I'm telling him one thing probably, Bob. Don't leave that left hand out there. Every once in a while, I leave that left hand out there a little too long. Oh, big left hand from Cloud. And it has Woods staggered once again. And again, the problem with Woods, and Cloud has come prepared to take advantage of that kick in the arm of Woods. He pulls straight back. Another big right hand and a combination has Woods hurt again. And the referee is watching. And again, Woods goes back straight with the hands down. That time, Cloud did not step with him. Every once in a while, Woods, who's the taller man, that advantage of being tall gets taken away, thrown right back at him. Because he stands up tall when the shorter man gets close. And then when you're the taller man and you're standing up tall and the shorter man's close, well, then it's a disadvantage being tall because there's a lot of target. And right now, Cloud is finding that target. It's only the 20th professional fight for Tavares Cloud. Still very young in this business. But he has looked like a champion, and he might be three minutes away from just that. Bob Oshusen in for Joe Tessitore alongside Teddy Atlas on Friday Night Fights. We're at the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Hollywood, Florida, just north of Miami. The first of two title fights on our card tonight. Clinton Woods and Tavares Cloud. The first time that Cloud has ever gone past 10 rounds. This is his 20th professional fight. Woods, three of his four losses have come in fights that have gone 11 rounds or further. And again, for Woods, 47 fight career, 14 years and nine months. He has not learned how to travel well. As we said earlier, most of his fights in England, he's only fought across the pond here in the United States two times. He's 0-2. And if something doesn't come out of the clouds, oh, he's going to be 0-3. Of course, the two fights that he fought in the U.S. were against Antonio Tarver and Roy Jones. Yeah, that... And tonight against Tavares Cloud, that's pretty good competition. He fights the best. And as we said early on, his only losses have been don't to punch, the best. Don't punch, guys. Don't punch. Let's go. But if you're looking for an up-and-comer, a star that maybe you haven't seen fight much, but a young man that looks like a champion, Tavares Cloud looks like a champion tonight. And just as importantly, he's TV friendly. He makes good fights. Gives you a reason to watch. You don't have to wonder where he is. He usually is right there in the grill of the opponent. And I think our fans like that. And this is just an hors d'oeuvre for the main event. Because there's plenty of firepower in the one to come. Randall Bailey and Juan Urango will fight for Urango's junior welterweight title in our main event next. Again, that jab's been missing from Woods. 
for the most part all night long, and that's why he's so far behind the eight ball here, Bob. And watch the jab again. When Woods does use the jab, it's not that full extension jab where you can keep the shorter guy away. It's the half jab, the three quarters jab. And there's no jab. And then, of course, Cloud walks right in. And again, I think Woods hurting himself, showing great gamesmanship like he has throughout his career. But when he jabs, he comes in, needs to stay out. One round minute remaining between Clinton Woods and Tavares Cloud on Friday Night Fights. Well, let's listen into Clinton Woods' corner. He has one last three minutes to try and got one round to go. make a comeback. Right. I don't want to see you doing nothing stupid this last round. Right? I want to see you tug, tug tight. Right? And I want to get man jumping in your face. Come on, big deep breath. Big deep breath. Give me a drink. Do not do nothing stupid. Now listen to me. Yeah. Let after a right hand, can you try a left hook like you did the round before? Huh? All right. All right. Don't go right hand crazy. Deep right. breath again. Deep breath again. Deep breath. You ain't even breathing heavy. Yeah. Let's, Let's go. go. Let's go, you're not ready. It's the last round. Let it go. After the right hand, come back with a double hook. Throw me some combinations. Al Banani, the trainer of Tavares Cloud, saying you're not even breathing heavy. And we're heading to the final round of a 12-round title fight between Tavares Cloud and Clinton Woods. Again, Cloud has only gone beyond the sixth round in one fight before, and that was a little over a year ago when he stopped Julio Gonzalez in the tenth. So this is as deep into a fight as he's ever gone, but. He has looked fresh throughout. As we take a look at the total punches so far, and it is lopsided in favor of the younger Tavares Cloud. Well, unless the sun comes out, Cloud is going to remain undefeated and grab that world title. And the sun coming out, well, that would have to be probably in the form of a right hand from Woods, maybe inside one of those left hooks. And Woods not really known for that kind of lightning, that kind of thunder power. The funny thing now is Woods is in and needs to be in desperation mode. What he needed to do to be ahead in his fight, he can't do now to pull this fight out of the fire. He needed to be on the outside, Bob, to be ahead in his fight, to be able to navigate this fight home the way he wanted to. It's too late for that. Now, he needs to be the opposite of what made sense going into this fight. Now he needs to fight on the inside and land something. He needs to fight in Cloud's territory and pull it out. And that's what he's trying to do. Well, Clinton Woods has been in a million fights, and with one minute to go in the final round, he certainly knows that he needs a two-out home run in the bottom of the ninth inning to try and shock Tavares Cloud. Well, I made the analogy early that there was a lot of miles on the odometer of Woods. If these two fighters were cause, or as we said, Woods, those tires are a little thin. Not a lot of tread left on those tires. And after the punches he's taken here against the young cloud, maybe it's time to park the car in the garage and say, you know what? Put a nice coat of wax on it. So you've been a great car. You've taken me a lot of places. But now I'm gonna let you rest a little bit. A courageous performance by Clinton Woods, but youth has been served tonight in the form of Tavares Cloud. The young man is a champion.
Tavares Cloud's mother, Emma Smith, can finally now breathe easy. As Cloud, in his 20th professional fight, could be a champion. We'll get the decision in a moment. The first of two title fights tonight on Friday Night Fights. Clinton Woods and Tavares Cloud and the younger Cloud Teddy had his way throughout this fight. Yeah, there was plenty of rain, plenty of thunder as far as Woods was concerned because he was feeling it all night long. Upstairs, downstairs, left hands, right hands. The eighth round, you could see Woods throw something, Cloud comes right back with more. And again, the left hook hurts Woods. Woods steps straight back. He caught that punch quite a bit. And all night long, there's Cloud opening up and just pouring it on. Let's take a look at our punch track fight recap numbers and far more punches thrown and certainly about 100 more landed in the fight by Tavares Cloud. Teddy scorecard lopsided as you would expect. Only one round for Woods and that was back in the second. And a 10-8 round for Cloud where he hurt Woods who's not easy to hurt. He hurt him with that left hook. Let's get the official decision into the ring and Bob Alexander. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino, Hollywood, after 12 rounds of championship boxing, we go to the scorecards. All three judges, Mike Ross, Hubert Earl, and Nelson Vasquez score the bout 116-112. For the winner, by unanimous decision, now the IBF light heavyweight champion of the world, Tavares Plow. Or anybody could read that weather. It's Fair weather, it's happy weather right there for the Cloud family. From abject poverty, living in basically a one-room house with anywhere from 10 to 15 relatives. At times in that house in Tallahassee for Tavares Cloud. To becoming a champion. Let's go to Bernardo. Thank you very much, Bob Tavares. It's been a long time coming, and the road was not easy. You had to go through Julio Gonzalez and now through Clinton Woods. What does it feel like to do it here at home in Florida? Well, it feels good. It was a lot of hard work. First of all, I want to say thank God. I want to tell Tallahassee, Florida, Quincy, Florida, stand up. They thought we couldn't do it. Never let us be denied. Never let them say we can't do it. We did it. We champions of the world. Now talk to us about what it meant to beat Clinton Woods because his only losses here in the U.S. were against Roy Jones Jr. and Antonio Tarver. It looked like in the eighth round and the tenth round you had him, but he just showed a lot of heart tonight. Yeah, he's a very experienced fighter. You know, I can't take nothing away from him. And like I said, I don't, I don't go in looking for the knockout. You know, uh, I can go the distance if I have to. I can still be strong and dangerous in the later rounds. And uh, Clint Woods is a good fighter, crafty fighter. I take my hat off to him. Chad Dawson did not want to fight you. That's how you ended up fighting Clinton Woods. There's a lot of big names out there. You've been the best kept secret so far. Yeah, I mean, Chad Dawson, I really don't have nothing to say about him. You know, as long as he's, as long as he's out of my way, you know, I fight anybody in front of me. You know, I can understand you having a couple fights for money, but I mean, how can you call yourself pound for pound best in the world? And everybody you fighting is 40 and over. Come on, man, fight, fight some young fighters. You know, at least Clint Woods was 37, 36. You know, you didn't and do at this least by yourself. He your had a mark on his face or something. All right, but you didn't do this by yourself. Your mother and you have been a team from the beginning. What does it mean to her and and for you guys to, to come away with this title? Uh, it means a lot. It just just means that you know we started at the bottom, but that don't mean we got to stay there. You know. The hard work and determination, we can, we can go anywhere we want to go. There you go. He said he didn't want to go back to poverty with this title. That sets him up for great success. Bob, down to you. All right, Bernardo. So one championship has already been decided.